The maximum penalties for drug supply depend on the drug type, the drug quantity, and whether the case stays in the local court or goes up to a higher court such as the district court. For less than a small quantity, the maximum penalty in the local court is two years imprisonment and or a $5,500 fine. In the district court, it's 15 years imprisonment and or a $220,000 fine. A small quantity is 0.25 grams of MDMA or ecstasy, one gram of amphetamines, cocaine or heroin, or 30 grams of cannabis. For less than an indictable quantity, the maximum penalty in the local court is two years imprisonment and or an $11,000 fine. In the district court, it's 15 years imprisonment and or a $220,000 fine. An indictable quantity is 1.25 grams of MDMA or ecstasy, five grams of amphetamines, cocaine or heroin, one kilogram of cannabis. For less than a commercial quantity, the charge becomes strictly indictable. That means it must be finalised in a higher court, such as the district court. The maximum penalty for that charge, again, is 15 years imprisonment and or a $220,000 fine. A commercial quantity is 125 grams of MDMA or ecstasy, 250 grams of amphetamines, cocaine or heroin, 25 kilograms of cannabis. For less than a large commercial quantity, the maximum penalty is 20 years imprisonment and or a $385,000 fine. A large commercial quantity is defined as 500 grams of MDMA or ecstasy, one kilogram of amphetamines, cocaine or heroin, or 100 kilograms of cannabis. For a large commercial quantity or more, the maximum penalty is life imprisonment and or a $550,000 fine. The penalties available to the magistrate or judge in drug supply cases are not just confined to fines and prison. There are a range of other penalties available. For example, Section 10, which is where you plead guilty or are found guilty of a criminal offence, but the court does not record a criminal conviction against you. Now, Section 10s have been awarded even in relatively serious supply charges. For example, supplying 20 ecstasy pills or more. However, it's more likely that you'll get a Section 10, the less serious the case is. Good behaviour bonds are also an option. That is where the magistrate or judge says that you need to be of good behaviour, that is not commit any offences for a particular period of time. Another option is a community service order, where you're required to undertake a certain number of hours of unpaid work, Another option is intensive correction orders where you have to undertake 32 hours of unpaid work per month plus you'll be monitored plus you must participate in various programs. A further option is home detention. That is where you're required to stay at home for a particular period of time subject to exceptions. For example, you may be allowed to go to work between certain hours or you may be allowed to go to medical appointments and so on. If you're charged with drug supply, it is important to see experienced drug defence lawyers. That is, criminal lawyers who have a long and proven track record of achieving outstanding outcomes for their clients. And what that means is go onto their website, have a, have a look at their results, see whether they have a good record of getting cases dropped at an early stage. It's very important. Certain lawyers will be able to fight to get cases dropped at an early stage and save you having to go to a jury trial or a defendant hearing. You should also see, though, that the lawyer you go to has a good track record of winning hearings and jury trials when they go that far. If the evidence is strong and you wish to plead guilty, your lawyer should have a good track record in keeping clients out of jail for substantive drug cases, that is, more important drug cases, or for less serious drug cases of getting Section 10s, that is, helping clients to avoid criminal convictions.